Even after all these years, Miss Dexter's mom. Mmm. Jendi Tartakovsky. I was, I've said that wrong my entire life. Um, welcome back guys to the show, hello. If you've seen the title, we'll be talking about Dexter's Laboratory. That's right. I know it's not typical like anime content that we do here usually, but the episode I want to talk about specifically is related to the culture of anime in Japan as a whole. Anyway, uh, Jendi Tarkovsky, Tartakovsky? The guy who made Samurai Jack made Dexter's Lab, or I guess the guy who made Dexter's Lab made Samurai Jack. Uh, so this episode that I want to be talking about is the one that is the finale, I suppose, from, uh, I don't know what season it is of Dexter's Laboratory, but it is the episode where Dexter becomes a foreign exchange student and he goes all the way to Japan, uh, his favorite little um, place that he pulls inspiration from, I guess, within his um, his craftsmanship and his his experiments that he does. And it's hard to deny so when you see all the cool mech designs that he comes up with. And this whole entire episode is just a love letter to uh, mecha anime and like Voltron, Power Rangers, all that mixed into one, which is why it was always like one of my favorites growing up. The episode is titled Last But Not Beast. It's a two-part episode and uh, I did confirm just a second ago that it was the finale of season two. It aired all the way back in 1998. I know, fucking some of you guys are probably like, what What year? That uh, The 1900s? Yeah, I know, It's it's been a while. But going back and watching it right before I uh, you know started working on this, it holds up so incredibly well, and that is just a testament to Jendi Tartakovsky's uh, style and just his his way that he portrays everything within the story. It's just like, it, it holds up so well. Same thing with Samurai Jack. I mean, if you go back and watch that too, you can just, it holds up right there with the current uh, animation that we have going on now. And growing up around that time, I always enjoyed Dexter's Lab because it did feel so like, anime influence at points and I was like oh this is kind of cool and that was back when anime was like a, a, a lower key thing and like only a few get to watch it you know like Adult Swim whatever we had like a little uh, glimpses into it at that time it wasn't like overexposed as it is now so this was kind of like my entry point into the genre as it were and as a kid I couldn't really explain why I was so drawn to this episode and you know now that I've grown up and now that this channel is all about anime obviously um I guess it was because I was so enthralled by just that uh culture of it all so basically the episode opens up with Dee Dee running to Dexter's room telling her mom that oh no he's gonna be late he never listens and uh, you think it's gonna be Dexter but when she opens it it is Toshi the little Japanese boy who was there on a foreign exchange program and you're like oh that's kind of cool so that must mean that Dexter's in Japan and then it cuts and goes all the way across the pond to see Dexter is in fact in Japan with uh, that boy's family Toshi's family which which is kind of crazy to think about because at the time I don't know how old Dexter is I feel like from the very first episode it's seen that Dexter was born and then he was so smart that he just started walking and talking and it didn't really give a timeline on his age because the way it's portrayed is that if he was just born and then put his lab coat on he was there so Dexter could be anywhere from uh, a month old to seven or eight I don't know but either way it's crazy that this exchange program existed at such a young age because I know that you can probably still do it now but you have to be at least in high school so crazy so watching it now is pretty funny because it is from the 90s 98 um some of the humor and jokes in there are a little bit dated uh Dexter's mom is just yelling at Toshi it's the typical you know when someone doesn't understand you, you you yell for some reason thinking that they'll understand you she's telling Toshi you have a good day at school I hope you enjoy it and Toshi's like okay thank you I, I, I think I will have a good day it's like perfect English and vice versa, Dexter's in uh, Toshi's home. And uh, he's not really paying attention to the family. He's just kind of rushing so he can get to school as fast as he possibly can. Uh, they have a one part where they tell him, hey, we should sit down and give each other strength for the day. And Dexter doesn't respect him. He's like, yeah, whatever, I'm out of here. He leaves and goes to school. And then one of my favorite scenes happens early. Uh, he arrives at school early and he's just kind of walking around the playground talking and he sees two kids playing with toy robots. And he's like, hey, what's, what's going on here? And they're like, oh, we like to build Gunpla essentially, which is kind of cool to show a nod there to the Gunpla culture and uh, Dexter's like Oh, you guys want to see my robot and then shows him his Transformed big old robot and the kids are like that's nothing you're fucking trash watch this and they both have their own little robots And then they proceed to try to one-up each other with their own sets of robots um, The first I guess nod to just like the mecha culture within Japan just having like I have a backpack full of 
a robot. Whenever I'm ready, I can just pop it out and open. And uh, yeah, that was always one of my favorite designs was uh, Dexter's fursuit that he shows where he's just kind of standing and controlling his arms and legs. For some reason, it always stuck out to me. And also, the kid in the red, his mechas were so trash compared to the other kid in blue. He had like a robot and then he had a jet that transformed. Both were Transformers, so I guess that was kind of a nod to Transformers. But as a kid, I was always like, oh man, I hope that some kids approach me in the playground and I can show my cool robot. I didn't have one, but I wanted it to be real at that point so bad. And from there, they get into a little scuffle and they uh, shoot some missiles into a mountain and that wakes up the giant Godzilla-esque creature. Side note, it's crazy that they're having a full out robot battle and really nobody's affected by it. They're kind of just like, oh cool, like this is an everyday thing. So much so that the teacher has her own robot where she breaks up the fight. Crazy. And then at that point it becomes kind of a Godzilla film and a, a love letter to Godzilla, I guess. Um, his backstory is that he's been asleep for years and that the people of Japan fear him and no one can really defeat him. So seeing him, another cool thing. Uh, I wasn't really into Godzilla as a kid. I, I was like, oh, it's cool. I understand it from a distance. So when this happens, I'm like, cool but at that point it felt more like power rangers like they're fighting a big old monster and uh, they need to get a giant robot to beat it but up until this point it is like the coolest thing to see jendy's character designs as far as like the robots go you can see his style his style has always been really like sharp like the characters like from samurai jack and from primal everybody has a distinct character design but like the edges are super sharp like the elbows on the robots are sharp and like the facial structures are very sharp too so it is cool to see like his style from the beginning how it evolved but how he had like the very foundation of it during the early days of dexter and another aspect that i really love about this and uh, it, the, the quality gets lifted for me is because it is a two-part episode so it feels like a, a movie and uh, most dexter's episodes are like two-parters so like one's 15 minutes and the other one's 15 minutes whatever how they used to do back in the day so getting that extended time was really cool and also seeing the entire cast basically from the dexter's lab universe on full display is another like cherry on top for me and that's another reason why it sticks out the most to me because we get to see the justice friends of america you know major glory and val hallen how they have their little side episodes sometimes and then we get to see super monkey and his little secret agency going on there and we get to see more of the family come into play here this is like one of the first times you get to see like uh, their, their relationship with each other and not just like always against each other. This episode, they needed to work together to defeat the big Godzilla-like creature. So it was fun to see them kind of just like having love for each other, but also keeping the family dynamic during the battle scenes. And yeah, that's basically how the episode unfolds. The Justice Society comes, they fail, they can't, they can't do anything about it. Uh, and then Monkey comes, he fails, can't do nothing about it. And then finally, Dexter's like, you know what? I need to assemble a team of sorts and I will just assemble Voltron essentially with my family and we will destroy this giant Godzilla-like creature. Uh, but before then, they need to get the secret to defeat him, which is love, which they get from Toshi old boy from the beginning he gets locked in Dexter's lab and he uh he uses the power of the east to win to spend his message and he uh he appears to them dressed in samurai armor and that was always a cool little uh, side bit that they had that I wish they would have explained more like what what he is is he even like a kid or is he like an ancient spirit that's lived generations with this family I don't know but it was a cool little bit where he's kind of just like the the harbinger of hope for them like hey you guys if you want to come together because back in the day this was a dragon we need to show love compassion and show that we're not afraid of this thing so cute little little message i guess behind the entire episode overall though the episode just felt so of the time and where like anime was at the time and like where um you know voltron and power rangers of that sort were kind of out at the time where they kind of just threw it on this show and he was like you know what this is everything that is happening on this side of the world basically like you know westerners maybe you don't know like the culture of uh Japanese people and all that stuff like that so let's just show it to you in this episode of Dexter's and maybe it'll pique your interest a little bit and be like oh there's more than just like western style of humor or whatever there's like bad guy of the week type stuff check it out over here so that definitely worked on me at least that's how I interpreted it as a kid like oh what what is this like kids with robots fighting each other on the daily like what what is that not just like a a bonk and like a Flintstones type slapstick humor show. And Dexter's always had this, like the episodes before this finale and some after this, how it had just like those aspects of anime to it. And uh, Dexter's always used like his cool robot suits or whatever, or like random uh, friends amongst his, his crowd they don't realize. But it was cool to see it pushed to the front with this episode. Like here's everything that encapsulates what 
Dexter as a child is into. This is all of his personalities coming together and making one cool little episode, like a bad guy of the week type episode. And I think it does a good job of reminding you that Dexter doesn't despise his family as much as he like leads on. It shows you at the end of the day that they are still your family and that you can come together and uh, you know love each other and get through whatever goal you have or whatever obstacles in front of you. So I did like that. It was very sweet that they still had that family dynamic through it all. And Dexter's mom in that skin tight Power Ranger-esque suit, man. Let me tell you. But yeah, it's just one of those episodes that's always stuck with me uh, throughout my life and adulthood. And I think about it, I guess it is like my Roman Empire, how you think about it randomly, like once a week or maybe once a day. This just always pops in my mind, especially the, the playground scene where he just pulled his backpack robot out. And I'm like, man, that's so cool. I want, I want that for me in my life. So yeah, I just wanted to spread awareness for this episode. I know a lot of us have seen it, but if you haven't seen it yet or never seen Dexter's Lab, I suggest you go watch it because I feel like it does um, fit right in theme with, you know, like the animeness of this channel and the influence that it had on the, on, I guess, animation from there on out, even though that's a whole different discussion of where the exact influences, influenced, um, you know, anime influence on Western animation. That's a whole different conversation. But uh, yeah, I do suggest checking out this episode again if you've never seen it or Dexter in general, if you've never seen it, it is a great Great little show. It does hold up, especially with, uh, yes, Jendi's um, animation still is top-notch even back then. So that is my little review, uh, I guess re-review of uh, Last But Not Beast from Dexter's Lab. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I didn't blabber on too much. I probably did, but that's okay. We, we like to blabber about things that we enjoy. So um, yeah, if you guys did enjoy it, let me know down below. If you didn't enjoy it, don't let me know down below. I don't want to take that criticism. I don't like that. But if you do want to follow us and subscribe, I appreciate that. That's also down there somewhere. Go find it. And um, yeah, until next time, go build a robot. Go fight some kids.